Hello everybody, welcome along. My name is Benjamin Bloom. This is the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. Please leave your bias at the door and strap yourself in. We are just over 24 hours away from England versus Germany. It came up in my pre-tournament predictions and I was like, oh no, oh no. And from that moment onwards, <laughs> we've just been inexorably sliding toward this titanic meeting once again. It's Wembley, it's the knockouts, it's the Germans and the tension ramped up a little bit more last night after we had the Czech Republic beating the Netherlands which now, not wanting to go too much down the hyperbole route here, means that were England to beat the Germans and advance to the semi-finals. They would either play the Czechs or the Danes to reach the final. Um, I don't want to use the term draw opening up because there's a big game and we're about to talk about it, but <clears throat> draws opening up. <laughs> right, let's get into the whys and wherefores. So this is how we got here. I say the inexorable. We knew that were England to win... Group D, Germany were in a group with France. They weren't likely to finish top, we didn't think. And they didn't. They finished second, despite everybody swapping places all over the show during that last game. So, looking at those England fixtures, England beat Croatia 1-0. Clean sheet. England drew 0-0 with the Scots. Outrage, overreaction, the worst thing in the history of life. Um, but then they followed that up by beating the Czech Republic, another clean sheet. And now we know the Czech Republic are a confirmed quarter finalist. So maybe that result, <laughs> we know the context of results always changes after the fact. And uh, Captain Hindsight always sits there smugly, doesn't he? But look, England have not conceded a goal they have got seven points from their group games. Um, I think a lot of supporters are missing the point of what Gareth Southgate's trying to do here. We get a lot of negativity. That's, that's the deal with England. It's all negative. It's a thoroughly toxic debate. But a lot of people talking about style of play and overly pragmatic. And I keep saying it. Defences win tournaments. Um, and... Last night, if you saw Belgium that started out with De Bruyne, Hazard and Lukaku, if you want to talk about attacking riches, uh, they played a three at the back, two holders and just sat in for the second half clean sheet. They're in the quarterfinals. Even the one team I hold up as being a wonderful tournament winner, Brazil, 2002. Yes, they had Cafu, Roberto, Carlos, Rivaldo, Ronaldinho, Ronaldo. They got into the knockout phases, two holders in midfield, three centre-backs, solid, let those other boys attack. Tournament football, knockout football, you don't get another go on Tuesday or on Saturday or on Tuesday like you do in the league. And I would much rather be looking at that table with England having three clean sheets than perhaps like the Dutch who have also gone home, eight goals on the... Um, on the clock. We know we've got the attacking quality. So um, that would be my take on England in the groups. What about the Germans? They lost 1-0 to the French in that titanic opening game for them. Two highly decorated nations there. Now here's the worrying game. Portugal 2, Germany 4. Where Portugal went in with their 4-2-3-1. With their double pivot sat quite narrow and the German wingbacks ate them up and spat them out, didn't they? Uh, Kimmich and Goosens. We will talk more about them, but we knew and we know that the 3-4-3 of Germany and a 4-2-3-1, if it matches up in that way, is not desirable. And the Germans looked good in that game. However, the Hungarians had this rehearsed, didn't they? They didn't do that. They didn't allow the switch of play. They didn't allow themselves to get 
um, too narrow and, um, you know, the spaces to open up outside. They've got a 2-2 draw and Hungary we knew as well. Good pressers, weren't they? So look, four points for the Germans. Defeat against France. Big win against the Portuguese who have since gone home, obviously. And the draw against Hungary, which was the more surprising result. Hungary, a big underdog there. That's how we got here. Um, here are the England lineups. So, going from left to right is the opening game. You will see it's been a back four for each of the games. Uh, we've had little tweaks. Um, obviously, Maguire was always going to come back. So, Mings played the first two games very well. And Maguire came back in. Otherwise, fullbacks were Walker and Trippier in the first game. James and Shaw in the second game. Shaw then maintains his place and Walker comes back in. So, in terms of the defence, we know probably that the first choice defence in a back four is... Walker, Stones, Maguire, Shaw. But we may well be expecting a back five. And Trippier and James have also been used. So we're five from six there. Um, every game in midfield, we've had Calvin Phillips and Declan Rice. We've made some mount in the first two games. But of course, he wasn't around in the third game, which meant Jack Grealish could come in at 10. Every game, we've had Harry Kane at number nine. We've had Raheem Sterling down the left. Foden is the first choice down the right, but Saka got the nod with Foden on a yellow card. It was a good call by um, Southgate, being how big this game is. So, look, Foden, first choice there. Saka is second choice. And for those people obsessing about um, what Jadon Sancho did in the Bundesliga this season. Well, whatever he did in the Bundesliga hasn't been as good as what Phil Foden and Bukayo Saka have done in the training camp. So um, maybe we can park that one. And I think we know the pecking order front right, don't we, is Foden, Saka, and then Sancho. But remember, there are five substitutions in this game as well. What the Germans done, 3-4-3 three, three, all the way. And... Basically, look at the back, well, the goalkeeper and the back seven because it's the same in every game. Neuer in goal, one, two, three. Rudiger, Hummels and Ginter are the back three every game. Kimmich and Goosens, they're excellent, the two wingbacks. Um, and Kroos and Gundogan, who we are very familiar with um, in England. Gundogan, Man City and Kroos has just been a great player. For so long. So, knowing German stability and sensibleness, I think we know what the keeper, the back three, the wing backs, and the double pivot is going to be. Notice how many other countries, by the way, guys, play a double pivot without their fans going into meltdown. Uh, the Germans, another one there. Okay, Cruz and Gundogan. High, high quality. The issue with the Germans is up top, isn't it? There's no real. Number nine there, we see Serge Gnabry for the first two games uh, with Havertz and Muller off him. But in the third game, Muller out and uh, Sane in. Um, and what those three players give you, Gnabry, super quick, obviously. Havertz is kind of a inside forward, isn't he? Like a, a modern winger. Muller... He's a player, isn't he? He's just the, the brains, though, isn't he? A very, very clever guy. Doesn't give you that physicality that maybe someone like Leroy Sane would, but he's only been tried for the one game. So that's what the Germans and English have done. What are they going to do in the big game? So, Germany. Look on the left-hand side. I've chopped out the back eight, essentially. And let's assume that there's no reason why that would change. Neuer, Ginter, Hummels, Rudiger, Gussens and Kimmich, wingbacks, Gundogan and Kroos. Why would they change system? Why would they change those players? And there's a couple of greats in there, isn't there, in terms of Neuer and Kroos, especially and Kimmich, um, the new breed as well. So I don't see that changing. 
Those are the front threes for the other games. Nabry, Muller, Havertz twice. And Havertz, Sane, Nabry. Now, I have given you a list on the right-hand side of the other options. Werner, Sane, both wide forwards. Voland could play down the middle. Um, ignore Cruz there. Havertz, Muller, Gnabry. Goretzka interests me as well because he's a big physical specimen and he did score, didn't he? He came on and scored against Hungary as well. So, basically, we've got to pick a front three here for the Germans. And in a big game like this, I don't know about you, I want Thomas Muller on the pitch if I'm anything to do with Germany. Now, whether Joachim Löw thinks not enough physicality or not, let's be honest, this is going to be a tight game. This is a big game. Are there going to be huge spaces for a Timo Werner and Leroy Sané to run into? No, probably not. Do you need um, a big player in a big game? I think you do. So I suspect Muller starts. Um, I would start him. But then again, I haven't been managing the German team for about 15 years like Joachim Löw does. Um, so I suspect it will be Muller, Gnabry and Havertz with those options there of Werner, Sane, Voland, and don't count out uh, Goretzka as well because remember they can change system. Go to a midfield three and have Goretzka as the runner forward. But my prediction is it'll be the team that started the first two games and Thomas Muller would play um, with Gnabry. And Kai Havertz, who of course plays for Chelsea and scored the winner in the European Cup final. Shall we move on to England? Now, I'm going to give you three 11s here. And I'm going to be right honest here. There's no youtube style reveal at the end. This is the 11 I think Southgate will play. And I've called it 11 number one experience. It's a big game. And I think Southgate will go with trusted lieutenants in this one. And I think he's going to play three at the back. And I don't think three at the back's plan B. I think three at the back is plan A. And uh, Southgate was always waiting until he came up against the big nation. No disrespect to the Czechs, the Croats or the Scots. But I think this setup is designed to be defensively sound. To have physicality and ability to get up and down wide. To be dangerous from set plays, i.e. three centre-halves plus a Harry Kane. To have your double pivot with the protection of Rice and Phillips can move off a little bit. And we're in a position now in the England squad where there are players of creative quality. So, I think Pickford, when um, Southgate plays a back three, that is his permutation. Maguire, Stones and Walker. You get the leadership of Maguire. Stones may be the best passer of the three, although Maguire's no slouch. Uh, Walker, obviously, uh, very pacey and very experienced. Luke Shaw seems to have the nod at left back. And I think the Ben Chilwell COVID thing just puts that one over the top. I think Shaw plays, doesn't he? And then down the right, obviously, Reese James had played before. But I think he goes trippier for two reasons experience and set plays and they've got to deal with Goosens down that left hand side and um, well we'll see where he puts Muller whether that's central and Nabry or even if Asane or someone plays it's going to be a interesting one there Rice and Phillips have played the whole tournament but uh, I suspect Phillips will be told only go forward on viable breaks and sit in circulate the ball and uh, good luck with Tony Cruz and Ilkay Gundogan. Up the top, Harry Kane's going to play, isn't he? And I do think, I know a lot of people are obsessing about Jack Grealish. Um, I don't think he starts in this system. Uh, Sterling has scored both of England's goals. And if you can create overloads and have the ball and have players up the pitch, Sterling does that all the time for Man City and he's the only goal scorer for England. It would be slightly odd to drop him now because he's only one on the score sheet. And then Foden, I know it says experience there. Rashford is probably more experienced. Saka played the last game, but I think Foden's his guy down the right-hand side. I'm assuming 
that Mason Mount, they're going to, is going to miss this one because he hasn't done all the training. That's my assumption. Uh, obviously, you could have a scenario where um, Mason Mount would be in ahead of Foden there. And uh, does he then get attracted to Tony Cruz though? That's it. Or is that Calvin Phillips' job? I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. That's what I think Southgate will do. I know exactly what the criticisms will be of that. That they'll say you don't need a double pivot in front of a back three. Well, Brazil did um, winning the World Cup in 2002. Belgium did last night. Germany are going to have one. Um, it seems all right for plenty of other teams to do it. And I I suspect, um, you know, we will... We will be in that camp as well. Here are some other options. Here's the same system. But if Southgate wants to go with pace and physicality, I've just altered the right-hand side with Reese James over Kieran Trippier. Again, we're talking about Goosens, Nabry, Havertz, Werner, whoever goes down that side uh, alongside the Atalanta fullback. And then Saka over Foden. Obviously, Foden is not a run, 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 carry the ball. He's a... Stop, get involved, dribble, play it around the corner. Uh, brilliant player, Foden, but he's not as physical as Bukayo Saka. And we know Saka is ahead of Sancho and Rashford, don't we, at the moment? So that is another option there. And this is all assuming that Mount will miss out. Um, I can see an argument that people could make that you take the width out as well and you go for a Jude Bellingham or a Jordan Henderson and a third midfielder, or even a Mason Mount uh, there. But we haven't seen Southgate. We have actually in one of the... Um, I can't remember who it was against in one of the matches at Wembley this past year. We did see a 3-5-2 with a front two. It was Ings and Calvert-Lewin have played up top, so it wasn't a it wasn't a main opponent. But I just, I'm just not seeing that. I think he matches up with the German system here. And here is plan B, which I would be so surprised to see Southgate use, especially after the Portuguese went under so spectacularly with this system. And look at those big gaps. You can almost see them in the picture now, can't you? Uh, behind Saka and Sterling. And I mean, that's basically... Is that the same team that played the last game? I think it is, isn't it? Um, with Saka and Grealish in there. I suspect that... Um, and this is only going to happen if England are behind. Let's be honest. England are going to not hail Mary this if it's nil-nil with 20 minutes to go and try and win it in normal time. If England go behind, I think you lose one of the wing-backs, uh, i.e. Kieran Trippier is out of that, and in comes Grealish. Um, and you would hope then the situation for Grealish, or indeed Foden, um, is that... The game is slow, the game is tight, and it's about piercing through or winning a free kick or a penalty or something like that. I do think you won't see Grealish and Foden in that, in that system. Um, I think you need the pace of Saka and Sterling either side for when Kane drops in. I'm getting nervous thinking about it. So look, there's three options from me. The experienced route, which I think is what Southgate's going to do where it'll be a back three, Trippier and Shaw wing-backs, Foden, Sterling, Kane up top. There's the more physical interpretation of that. I don't see any other changes. Uh, maybe Jude Bellingham would be more physical in central midfield, but um, I just don't see him taking Rice and Phillips out now. Um, and there's the 4-2-3-1 if needed, but come on, it's going to be too narrow in this game and there's going to be too much on those wide players to stop the main threat of Germany which is Goosens and Kimmich isn't it down the sides for them here's what our friends over at Betfair say god it's tight look 90 minute odds there England 31 to 20 Germany 19 to 10 so basically half England's one there and you're going to get 15 and a half so they're a slight head Favourite on that. And then look, uh, 3 to 4 versus 21 to 20 to qualify, including extra time and pens. We have 9 to 4 the draw uh, in 90 minutes. Oh, it's nervy. I've had my say. Now you have yours. How do you see this panning out? England versus Germany. Obviously, 
I'm a big proponent. Freedom of speech. You are entitled to your opinion. But let me just give you some ideas. International football is pragmatic. Defences win tournaments. Um, and nobody is going all out attack in these knockout games. Let's try and keep the comments positive. It's very easy to um, confuse being negative with being smart. They're two entirely different things and uh, they're really not linked at all despite um, what some people's um, output of opinions would make you believe. And let's try not to obsess with players that have barely kicked a ball in this tournament that are not likely to be in the team. Southgate has been with the camp, has been training. None of us have seen that. The only thing we've seen is what's been going on in the games. But of course, let me know your opinions. Which 11 would you think Southgate would go for? Honestly, we're at the point now in the tournament where I normally ask, what would you go for? And what do you think Southgate would go for? Really, what would you go for is kind of irrelevant now because we've had three games. We've had the camp. We know what Southgate's uh, been training them um, on doing. We know the patterns. So anyone jumping in with uh, Mason Mount and Declan Rice in a double pivot with Foden, Grealish, Sterling and Calvert-Lewin and Kane up front, it's, it's, not, it's not really worth discussing because it's not going to happen, uh, is it? These massively attacking teams. And the $64 billion question, how do you see it going? God, I'm nervous even thinking about it. Uh, it's going to be tight. A lot of these games have been. Italy and Austria went nil-nil coast to coast and then took extra time. Uh, the Netherlands and the, Netherlands and the Czechs were nil-nil until the red card for uh, De Ligt. Uh, last night, a goal from outside the box from the Belgians. That was that, the only goal of the game. And it's only really the Welsh and the Danes where we got the hammer in, didn't we? And I don't see either England or Germany winning this one 4-0. Famous last words, of course. Uh, let me know what you think. It is England versus Germany. That is our preview. We'll see you at 5pm tomorrow night. I'll be here from 4.45 and... It's going to be a nervy one, isn't it? You're not going to get a prediction out of me. We'll do that on the show before. All I predict is it will be tight. And um, this is not a prediction, but all I want from this England team is to leave it all out there. And that doesn't mean attack, 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 attack. It really doesn't. To play smart, to play calmly and not overly emotionally and... If we're going to go down, let's let it not be uh, because we were scared or because we were dumb. Um, let's let it be because they were better than us. And, um, and then tight games sometimes come down to luck. And God, we're due a bit against the Germans, um, aren't we? Anyway, I've had my say. No, you have yours. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Join me tomorrow for the Watch Long. England versus Germany. I feel sick with nerves. <laughs> Over and out. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. To see more videos from this channel, hit the subscribe button. And to be notified every time we upload, ring the bell for those notifications to come through on your device. If you really want to support the channel and me as a content creator, I will be eternally grateful if you head over to the merch store and grab something or support over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. Thank you for your time. Go and watch another video.